This video is brought to you by Squarespace. You are deploying your static website wrong. If you have a static website yourself, your workflow is probably something like this. You generate your website in your favorite static website generator, and then you copy the resulting web pages over to your web server. And if you're lazy like I've been for years, you may not even have a separate deploy user on the server, so you probably need to copy the website to your login user's home folder, then log into the server, copy the folder with the generated website to the web roots, chmod it, and finally restart the server just to be on the safe side. Now that's a lot of work, and if you actually write a lot of articles, unlike me, doing this every time you update your website gets old very quickly. One thing that you could do to automate it is write some kind of a deploy script. What it would do is basically automate the process of building and copying the website to your server, so that you don't have to do it manually. However, a local deploy script will only work on your local machine, and if you have multiple machines, let's say a laptop and a desktop PC, you'll also need to synchronize your website sources between these two machines, and make sure that both machines have the static website generator of your choice installed on them, as well as all the dependencies. Oh, and don't forget the SSH key for deployment. However, there is a different way, and today I want to show you a way to automatically build and deploy your website every time you update it, using GitHub Actions. I have a very simple static website over at nottobeat.ee with a very large backlog of frequently updated articles. It currently runs on Zola, which is a super simple static site generator written in Rust. The way it works is I have a GitHub repository with the website, and then once I write my biannual article and do a git push, the changes get picked up by GitHub Actions. The little magic elves inside the GitHub data center set up an ephemeral Linux environment that will clone my repository, generate the static website, and deploy it to the server. The SSH key and other sensitive data is stored in the environment secrets, so I don't have to worry about copying them between all of my different machines, or different Linux installations if you're an avid distro hopper. Now obviously, some people might prefer something more local, so that you don't have to rely on GitHub or any other big tech services. Maybe something like a make file or simply logging into the server and running git pull every time you push to the repository. Plus, if you have a self-hosted GitLab instance, you can do something similar with GitLab CI. However, in this video, I will only be covering GitHub. So yeah, let's get cooking. First things first, we'll need to install Nginx, Certbot, and the Nginx plugin for Certbot. I'm on Debian 11, so I'm just gonna type sudo update double ampersand sudo upgrade first. And then I'll type sudo apt install nginx certbot python3 certbot nginx. Then we need to go to slash etc slash nginx and copy the default server configuration from sites available into conf.d slash static.conf. Now let's edit that file, and here we want to remove everything apart from this last block. Then we're going to uncomment everything and change a couple of parameters. Server name, here you're going to want to put the address of your website in my case, not to be .duckdns.org. You should also make sure that the domain name you're using is already pointing to the IP address of your server, and root is gonna be the folder which will contain your static website. I'll go with slash var slash www slash not to be, and you can obviously choose any directory name that you like. Just make sure to replace this path in all of the commands and the configuration files. Once that's done, you can close the file and type sudo nginx-t to test the configuration. Finally, we're going to generate the SSL certificates for our new website. For that, let's type sudo certbot-nginx-t and the domain name of the website. Here you're going to want to put your email. As you can see, I tried to get away with root at localhost, but it has outsmarted my outsmarting. <laughs> Now let's open our website in the browser and 404. That's exactly what we want to see, since our website directory doesn't actually exist yet. Now we need to create a separate unprivileged user that we'll only be using to copy our website over to the server. Let's type sudo user add dash capital G www slash data if you're in Debian based distro or nginx if you're on a Red Hat based one. Deploy dash m dash d slash var slash www slash not to be. Now we'll create our SSH keys, so let's switch to our local machine and type ssh-keygen-t-ed25519-f tilde slash dot ssh slash deploy. We'll also set an empty password here by pressing enter twice when asked for one. After that, we're going to create an SSH folder in our new user's home folder, slash var slash www slash not to be. You'll have to use sudo for that. Once that's done, we're gonna cd into the folder and put our public SSH key that we just generated into a file called authorized underscore keys, like so.
Finally, we need to make sure that the SSH folder and our authorized underscore keys file belong to the deploy user. So let's type the following commands sudo chown capital R deploy colon www data or nginx slash var slash www slash not the b sudo chmod 700 slash var slash www slash not the b slash dot ssh and finally sudo chmod 500 slash var slash www slash not the b slash dot ssh slash authorized underscore keys. We can now test our setup by switching to our local machine and typing ssh deploy at server ip dash i tilde slash ssh deploy. Now we're actually getting to the meat of this tutorial and that is deploying our websites. As you can see here, I have a folder with my website files and if you haven't done so yet, you need to initialize a git repository by typing git init and then create a repository in github and add it as the remote origin. Now we're going to create a hidden folder in the root of a repo called .github and then create another folder inside of it called workflows and finally we're going to create a file called cui.yml. I wrote a little template which you can find in the pinned comment of this video so I'm just going to copy and paste that and let's go through it line by line. So first this workflow is going to run every time we push to this repository. It's going to run in an Ubuntu VM which doesn't really matter all that much. It's going to check out the repository and then it's going to add our private SSH key to the SSH agent and don't worry, we're going to set up our secrets later. Then it's going to install a static website generator of your choice. For me, it's Zola, and for you, it can be something like Hugo, Jekyll, or even SSG5. This will run a full-fledged Ubuntu box, so you can basically just sudo apt install whatever. I'm using Snap here because Zola is not available in the APT repos. Then it's going to run a build command that will actually generate our static websites. Any command that you will put here will be executed in the root of your Git repository. Now we are moving to the process of copying our resulting website to the server. Before doing that, we're going to run SSH keyscan in order to avoid this message that you usually get when you try to log in to an SSH server for the first time. And then finally, we're going to rsync the public folder with our generated website to the server. In my case, Zola puts the generated website into a folder called public, and this will obviously depend on the website generator that you're using. Also, make sure that you have slashes after both source and target folder names. Otherwise, rsync will just create a new folder inside your target folder and copy the files in it. Once you've changed everything that you wanted to change, you can save the file but don't quit the text editor just yet. Before we commit our changes, we need to go to our GitHub repository settings, then click on environments and then create a new environment called deploy. Here we'll need to create three secrets, deploy underscore server, which will be the IP address of the server that hosts your website, deploy underscore username, which will be deploy in our case, and ssh underscore private underscore key, which is the private key that we generated for our deploy user. You can show the key by typing cat tilde slash dot ssh slash deploy in your terminal if you're on Mac or Linux, and if you're on Windows, you can simply navigate to the ssh folder in File Explorer and open the deploy file with Notepad. These variables are not going to be visible to any GitHub user, including yourself, and anytime they're going to show up in logs, GitHub is going to replace their contents with asterisks. Now we're finally ready to deploy our website, so let's go back to our terminal and type git add dot, git commit dash m, add GitHub actions workflow, and git push. Now let's go back to our GitHub repository and check on our first deployment. As you can see, it is now done, so let's open our website in the browser. And there you go! Now you can add CI slash CD for web applications to your resume. I mean, sure, it's a website and not an application, but hey, everything is an app these days, so... So there you have it! We learned a super simple and reliable deployment workflow for a static website, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if all of that sounds a bit too overwhelming, and if you still want to create an amazing website or an online store for your business without becoming a command line wizard, you should check out today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is the perfect solution for anyone looking to create a stunning website without any coding experience. From e-commerce sites to portfolios and blogs, Squarespace has everything you need to make your online presence stand out. With its easy-to-use tools and top-notch customer support, Squarespace is the smart choice for anyone looking to succeed online. Try it out for yourself today. Go to squarespace.com to get a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash wolfgang to save 10% of your first purchase of a website or domain. So thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video, and a huge thanks to my patrons. James Uppington, Kevin Ware, Carlos Banilla, David Love, Jubastica, Primus, 
robust stream of crypto, and anyone else who supports this channel. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.